think of yourself is not the advice you would expect from a book on spiritual devotion entitled The Imitation of Christ, except that it's perfectly in line with scripture. Just listen to this. Be watchful over thyself, stir up thyself, warm thyself, and whatsoever becomes of others, neglect not thyself. And Paul said, I discipline my body, I bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. 1 Corinthians 9.27 We are naturally selfish, and so the Bible is full of instructions about becoming less so, about thinking of others, putting their interests before our own. In fact, that's one of the things that the cross of Jesus teaches us. This is so obvious as to not need any explanation. But there is a danger. I can become so preoccupied with trying to help others that I neglect myself. Now this seems like an odd thing, but it's much more common than we think. There are many Christians who spend time and energy on others to the detriment of themselves, and those close to them can see it clearly. Everyone can see it clearly, except the person themselves. Now at first sight, this may seem commendable. After all, doesn't it say that we are to bear one another's burdens, to help one another, Galatians 6, 2, to carry our cross, Matthew 16, 24. And a cross is the place of death, death to self. Yes, it says all these things, and there certainly is a time to help others. But a situation or relationship must not be allowed to develop that drains the life out of one of the parties. This doesn't help anyone. Also, we can serve out of selfishness. It feels good to serve others. It can make us feel superior or more spiritual. Oh, the heart is deceitful above all things, Jeremiah 17 verse 9. We could be serving out of pride, bringing into the church the spirit of the world and it cannot be blessed. Most people will not be able to identify what it is that makes them feel uneasy when they are served by such a person, but uneasy they will be. You see, the gift of serving is underrated. It calls for great sensitivity and genuine respect for the other, not to mention humility. Also, it must come from a heart that is settled securely in Christ. Some people are unsure of their salvation and must prove every day that they are genuine servants, real Christians. Such people have little peace of mind because they are always trying to escape some sort of guilt. Their benefit to others is very limited as a result because they are usually physically tired and spiritually drained. They have little to give. Such serving isn't blessed. In a profound sense, we can only pass on what we ourselves are. The joyful impart joy, those securing grace, a gracious and light heart. When my service to others is for the right reasons, it will be confirmed by blessings all around. The person served will be truly helped, even inspired, and I will be enriched and humbled. True service is humbling. We sense God's approval and we see the fruit around us. That's humbling. One other aspect of this, regarding not the server this time, but the one being served. Beware of those who go about wanting everyone to notice them, to pity them and to serve them. Such people can actually be doing the work of the enemy, which is to drain the sincere servants of God and rob them of the energy that they could have for another genuine person. We must be wise as serpents, Matthew chapter 10 verse 16. Our energy is given to us in trust. And finally, back to our point, we must look to ourselves and make sure that we are truly walking close with Jesus, that our cup overflows, that our head is anointed and our hearts aflame with his love. God cares about you, dear child of God. It grieves him to see any one of us deceived into serving others to the detriment of ourselves. Matthew 6 verse 30 following says this. Then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said to them, come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. 
Well, there were many coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. So they departed to a deserted place in a boat by themselves. How lovely is that? May the Lord teach us to read the signs in our lives that indicate we are neglecting ourselves and we need to adjust. 